Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at elastic collisions. So let's get started. So it says here that in an elastic collision, both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. So this means that both the momentum and kinetic energy stay the same before and after the collision. And this is different, remember, to an inelastic collision, because remember for an inelastic collision, we said that momentum was conserved, but kinetic energy is not. And an example of an elastic collision is two snooker balls colliding, or for example, a Newton's cradle, as shown in in the picture here. So some of you might have seen this toy called a Newton's Cradle before, where you move one of these balls back from the end and then let it go and it hits into here and transfers momentum through all the balls until it reaches the end one and that means the momentum and kinetic energy is transferred to the ball over here, which can then move up. And if it wasn't for frictional forces like air resistance, a Newton's Cradle would continue to move like a pendulum forever, but we know that's not the case in real life. Now this picture here shows us a typical example of an elastic collision and it says here that note, elastic collisions usually involve two objects remaining separated after impact, moving off at different velocities. And this is unlike what we saw for an inelastic collision, because remember for an inelastic collision we saw that the two objects after the collision usually stick together. So to give you an example of this, I'm going to show you an animation. So here we have a 2kg trolley and a 1kg trolley, and the 2kg trolley is going to move into the 1kg trolley, which is initially stationary. And what we should see is that both objects move apart after impact, and you'll see that the two move off to the right. And if I just show you that again, you'll see the one of smaller mass moves off at a much higher velocity, whereas this one loses some velocity. But remember, the kinetic energy and momentum are going to stay the same before and after the interaction. So in this example, we've got a 1200 kilogram trolley moving at 12 meters per second into an 800 kilogram trolley moving at 9 meters per second to the right already. And when those two collide after the collision, you'll see that the 1200 200 kilogram trolley has lost a bit of velocity, which means that this one must have gained a bit of velocity to keep kinetic energy conserved. So again, in higher physics questions, you could be asked to work out, say, the velocity of one of the trolleys after the collision or before the collision. So if we look back at the picture here, you see we have a 1,200 kilogram trolley moving at 12 meters per second and colliding with an 800 kilogram trolley moving at 9 meters per second to the right. So both are initially moving to the right, but then after the collision, you can see that the 1,200 kilogram trolley has actually lost a bit of velocity whereas we would then expect the 800 kilogram trolley to gain a bit of velocity because we're saying that momentum and kinetic energy are conserved, remember. So when you see questions in higher physics about elastic collisions, you would typically see them look something like this. There's also a special case, and it says here that if two objects of the same mass collide elastically, they exchange velocities after the collision. For example, if a snooker ball travelling at 2 meters per second collides with another ball of the same mass, which is stationary, then the stationary ball will move off at 2 meters per second whilst the first ball will come to rest. So that's a specific example which you need to be aware of. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.